love you girls. Can you tell me how many ways to speak I love you? Hmm. You go first. Say. I'm crazy about you. I'm in love with you. You are the love of my life. I love you to the moon and back. I'm head over heels for you. You are my partner in crime. Oh, English is diverse. And English is definitely a way for us to communicate and have a chance to reach further. That's right. And welcome to I I am O Junior. <laughs> Welcome to IFO Junior Edition. And it's Saturday night, and it's time for us to meet with each other. And thank you so much for tuning in with us. Um, today we are going to talk about a lot of things, and I know that the topic is going to interest a lot of people. Now please take a look at the screen and listen to today's episode. Oh, you know what? I'm stressing out right now. What's wrong with you? Well, you see, the IELTS? I thought you would be fine. You are so smart. Well, yeah, I aim for an 8. I don't know, I have taken the IELTS for like 7 or 8 times. But my score doesn't seem to improve. Especially with writing. I'm struggling with it. Well, IELTS. We are talking about IELTS every time every place. And in the last episode, we had a talk with an expert about how to study English in general. And we have been receiving tons of messages on different social media platforms about how to study IELTS. And we're going back to the main and the original ver uh, vision of the show, IELTS Face Off. And our expert is super talented and amazing guest. And we're so honored to have him. He had spent a lot of years living and studying in America and also very experienced in teaching IELTS. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Mingduk. Thank you so much for joining us. Please have a seat. Thanks for having me. Yes. So how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. A bit nervous. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you have a really, you know, brilliant academic professions and backgrounds. So can you tell us a little bit more about your academic backgrounds? My academic background, so I studied 10th grade in Chen Fu High School in Hanoi mm -hmm. and then my parents sent me abroad. So I spent seven years learning high school and uh, college in the United States and then I spent a year working uh, as a brand apps ambassador for a company. Wow, so that, that's pretty um, a long time mm -hmm. in, in the USA. Yeah. So, I mean, when did you come back to Vietnam and why did you choose IELTS to be your profession? Okay. Well, I returned to Vietnam more than two years ago and have been teaching IELTS uh, for close to two years now. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I chose to teach IELTS, um, I guess it sounds a bit cliche, yeah. um, but I think I was born for this job. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a student, um, I was very passionate about fitness, so I worked as a fitness coach um, just through online coaching. Uh, but when I returned to Vietnam, you know how Asian parents go, yeah. uh, they don't want to hear uh, their kids returning from abroad after investing billions of Vietnamese dong uh, to, to get a good education and you telling them that you want to be a fitness trainer. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a fitness mm -hmm. trainer. I love it, but my parents wasn't too happy about it and um, I wanted to make them happy. Yeah. Uh, so I was looking for another job that would be more suitable for me. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, other than helping people improving their body image and how they feel about themselves, mm -hmm. um, I think helping kids and helping students realize their passion for our language. English, I think, is a very also noble goal to have. Well, that's amazing. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about IELTS. Yes. And more specifically, a lot of audience really want to know the study plan. Mm -hmm. Because um, nowadays, the vast majority of young Vietnamese students really want to take the IELTS and mm -hmm. to achieve their goals. So um, what do you think are the benefits and advantages of IELTS in Vietnam? Um, OK, I think there are plenty of benefits. Um, just because IELTS is not a knowledge test, it's a language test. So being able to do well on IELTS is proof that you have very high English proficiency. And as you know, in an increasingly globalized world, knowing a foreign language like English is very essential. Um, and on top of that, I think if you want to explore 
any opportunities abroad, you will need a foreign language. Um, and I think being proficient in English will allow you to come into contact with a whole set of new information. Because mm -hmm. if you only know Vietnamese, then you can only read content and watch content in Vietnamese. But if you know English, there are a whole bunch of materials that you can read on whatever subject that you are passionate about. That's right, I totally agree. And it's kind of a way for us to broaden our horizon. Yeah. Um, and myself, I, I, take the, I took the IELTS not because I really wanted to go study abroad at first, but it really opened up a door of opportunities for me. Okay. Um, so, you know, for the past few years, we could really witness, you know, the rising popularity of IELTS in yeah. Vietnam. And I believe that IELTS is also a part of a long-term goal so a lot of questions have been posed and one of those very popular one is when should I start learning for the IELTS and how long should I learn for the IELTS? Okay, um, I think according to language experts, the earlier we are able to expose children mm -hmm. to a foreign language, uh, the easier it is for them to immerse themselves in that language and acquire it. Uh, because as we all know it, children mm -hmm. are blank slates, highly impressionable, right? Uh, so ideally, I think they should start learning English as early as primary school. Um, having said that, I, I do suppose prim Vietnamese primary school students have other priorities, yes. uh, like learning f just fundamental skills like reading comprehension in Vietnamese, mm -hmm. basic arithmetic, uh, or other essential soft skills. And uh, on top of that, IELTS require uh, comprehension of certain complex ideas and social issues. Your second question, you said how long should they be yeah. learning English for? IELTS I more specifically. IELTS specifically. Now that I'm still, I'm, I am an IELTS teacher, mm -hmm. and I would say that I'm still learning the language, and I think this is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't put a, I wouldn't put a, like time cap on it. I think yes. you can always be learning, and there is always room for improvement. So how, the, another question is how long should they study IELTS for the test? For the test. Uh, because it is learning a new language, That's I definitely right. think you should uh, stay clear of any center that promise a too fast progress, like five months or six months. Mm -hmm. You need enough time to absorb the information uh, and really get comfortable with the language. So I think the, uh, the ideal duration for, to prepare for the IELTS test is probably anywhere between, I would say, 15 to 24 months. 15 to 24 months. Uh -huh. I mean, the maximum of two years. Yeah. So it can be uh, and I, I know it can be applied to the beginners in English. Beginner if English. So you're saying people who have no prior knowledge of yes, English like no whatsoever. Yes, no foundation at all. Um, okay. Yes, I think to depending on what band score you are aiming for. Uh, most Vietnamese students uh, they use the IELTS to get into their dream college or to graduate college. So 6.5 or 7 on the IELTS suffice. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with that desired band score, then 24 months I think is enough if you study intensively. Yes, I totally agree. And also, as you mentioned earlier, um, IELTS is basically English and is a lifelong process and journey to study. So um, how could I know that, okay, I am able to take the IELTS test and I mean I have the firm knowledge to take the IELTS test? Um, I think we are very blessed to be living in this day and age where we have access to a, a wide range of information um, and just materials. I think, and you ask, when do you know you're ready, yeah. right? Uh, there are a lot of, uh, of mock tests that you can take in terms of reading and mm -hmm. listening. Obviously, the Cambridge uh, books are a huge, uh, a very valuable resource because they are written by Cambridge. And Cambridge is the organization that write the IELTS. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a very accurate reflection of the actual test. Mm -hmm. um, so you can test your reading and listening skill uh, using these mock tests. In terms of writing and uh, speaking, it's a bit more challenging, right? Yes. Because you cannot uh, judge your own writing mm -hmm. or your own speaking. So I think this is where a good IELTS center would come in because a good IELTS center will have teachers who can provide valuable feedbacks and helpful feedbacks so that students know what area that they need to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and they can be the, the teachers, can be the people who make the judgment call to, to tell the students if they feel like the students are ready to take the test or not. Mm -hmm. um, and you have spent years in, in abroad, mm -hmm. so like you, you must have had a lot of 
you know, environments and you, you are immersed in a cultural environment so yeah. that you can really master your language. So for the Vietnamese students who, who don't have that enough, um, you know, you know, opportunity to go study abroad or like to have immersed with you know foreigners so what do you think should be the approaches for them um, I think they should try to build um, English learning habits mm -hmm. because throughout my time teaching I have noticed that there are so many students who are exceptionally good at speaking in English and they have never left Vietnam before and I wouldn't say they are they are very good at English, mm -hmm. but some of them don't even have the qualities of say a traditional hard-working student. They are not that studious at home when they have to do homework. Some of them would not do the homework. But when I ask them, so, so how come you're so good at English? Mm -hmm. Then they would tell me about their habits of just yeah. watching YouTube uh, videos, but it's all English content. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to have um, to build habits that facilitate the, the process of learning English. <laughs>
uh, improve your speaking and writing so they can point out your area of weaknesses. So I think the second step would be finding a good IELTS center with good teachers. Mm -hmm. So what is some recommendations and advice and some key takeaways that you could offer to the students and a lot of people who are watching the show that wants to conquer the IELTS? Um, I've been thinking about this a lot ever since I started teaching because yes. the question you asked me is essentially what you want to instill in your students, right? Um, and I think I will bring back to my previous point, which is you have to realize what you are learning English for. Because if you are learning for your parents, then there is only, you can only go so far because you're not doing it for yourself. Yeah. You have to know that if you want to get good at IELTS speaking, you, mm -hmm. are, you have to get good at expressing yourself in English. You have to be yourself in English. And it will take a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you have to realize all the obstacles that you're going to face and you have to, you have to accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, you have to realize that you're doing it for yourself. So like, for example, for me right now, I'm sitting across from you mm -hmm. and I can be myself. I can express my own opinions in English mm -hmm. and that is the ultimate goal. So just realize that you are learning English for yourself, not for everyone else. Your parents may be forcing you, but I think later on in life, um, everyone will realize that it comes from a good place and they also want you to be able to be yourself and have good opportunities. That's mm -hmm. why they are forcing you to study. Wow, okay. So the mindset is super mm -hmm. important. Yeah. So in every show, we have a myth, and today's myth about IELTS. Parents who are not fluent in English cannot help their children learn IELTS. Mythbuster, what do you think? Okay. Um, I think there is a tiny bit of truth in this mm -hmm. statement. Obviously, parents um, who are good at English yes. can better monitor the progress of mm -hmm. the uh, English learning journey of their children. But that is not to say that parents who are not good at English cannot help their children. I think there are two things that parents mm -hmm. who are not good at English can do uh, to um, just facilitate the English learning process mm -hmm. for their children. First, they can help establish English learning routines and habits, uh, but they need to set the bar very low on this one. So according yeah. to study, 15 to 20 minutes of exposure to English content per day is suitable for kindergarten children. Mm -hmm. And it can be as simple as letting them watch an uh, English cartoon or an English song. And this duration, this duration of 15 to 20 minutes, can be increased incrementally as the children uh, age. And I think by the time they are in secondary school, they should get at least about one hour of exposure to English materials per day. Mm -hmm. And the second one, I think, is be their companion. So what I mean here is just don't be a bystander. Ask them about mm -hmm. what they learned today and maybe uh, ask them to explain it back to you because if they are able to explain it, the knowledge that they learn in class back mm -hmm. to you effectively, that's one more time learning, right? And they will, uh, they will memorize the knowledge better. And just take part in whatever English activities that they are doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe just watch them play the game that they are playing or join them in an English movies with English subtitles. Mm, I totally agree. back with IFO Junior Edition and this is Voice of the Week and also my favorite part of the show because in every week we will have a contestant who is very smart, talented, cute, adorable and they're gonna be here making a presentation and improve their public speaking skills and listen to the comments and advice from our expert. And now please take a look at the screen to see who the contestant is. Hello, my name is Ming Wu and today I'm going to tell myself for a bit. Uh, my full name is Nguyen Minh and now I am 4th grade. Now I live in Hanoi, which is pretty nice. And I learned English from my teachers and books. And I began learning English since I was 4. And if you're asking why do I really like English, because if you learn English, you could talk to other people in other countries really well because most countries in the world speak the language of English. And that's it here. Bye-bye. I welcome to the stage, Ming Wu. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. How are you? I'm really scared and happy. You're scared and happy. Why scared and why happy? Because
because I have to stand on the stage and I'm really scared, but I came here and I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. Have you ever spoken in public? Yes. Yes, how many times? I think many, many times. Many, many times. Then why are you scared and nervous this time? I don't know why. Okay, so take a deep breath. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> okay, have you prepared for the prompt? Of course, I only prepared for four days. Four days out of six days that, since the first day you got the prompt. And here is the expert and he's gonna comment on yeah. your presentation. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Off you go to the stage. The prompt is when I grow up. Are you ready? Yes. When I grow up, I want to be a scientist, a great scientist. Why do I want to be a scientist? I want to be a scientist because I can discover new things around everything. And I can know many facts around us and being a scientist is actually really awesome. Science can almost answer every fact around us. And this is my knowledge about science. I know many things about science. And the thing that I know about science is many chemicals and I know about uranium and nuclear bombs and other stuff. Nuclear bombs cause so much damage to Japan, the, to the Japanese people. Some of them got cancer, some of them almost died and some of them died. And that's why I want to be a scientist to bring peace to the world and, and ban off the bad and horrible actions that the bad people make. And that's the end of my presentation. So do you have any follow-up questions? Okay. Um, I want to ask, so you said you are very interested in science, right? What is the first scientific fact that gets you interested in science? Um, it's actually first when I knew about the solar system and many other chemicals that I don't remember the name. I actually, I was really interested about it and I began to and I began to read books about it and I and now I really like science. Okay. Um, I have another question for you. Um, so we you talk about science as very big things, right? Solar system and the nuclear bombs. But I think science is everywhere around us, right? You say you can use scientific fact to explain anything. Almost so everything. I, almost I everything, yes. So is there anything in your home? How you can use science to explain how it works? Is there any tool in your home or any machine in your home that you can explain? Um, um, I don't... Uh, I know that it will, could be answered in science, but I, but if I explain it, and I don't actually, I it's hard to explain, so I can't actually explain it. Okay. So, uh, do you have any comments on um, the presentation? So, uh, I will comment you on your content and on your style. Content-wise, I think you did a good job. You answered the question, and you answered the question straight to the point very well. Uh, but let's talk about speaking style. So I have two comments for you. Um, I think um, you should have more variation in your pitch and in your tone. Uh, for me right now, it sounds quite monotone and it sounds a bit scripted. And that is not to say that be, being scripted is bad because this is a presentation. Obviously, you need to prepare beforehand, right? But you need to speak in a way that sounds like it's not scripted. So your speech is a lot more convincing and natural. Say for IELTS speaking, for example, in the future, if you want to take the IELTS test, um, and in IELTS speaking part two, normally you would have to tell a story. And if the examiner feel like you have memorized your answer, you would not get a good score. So you need more variation in your pitch. So it sounds like um, it's your natural speaking. It's not memorization. And my second comment is in terms of speed. Um, I think you have to control the speed that you are speaking at. Uh, don't let the speech consume you uh, and don't try to rush through the speech. Um, you, sometimes you should slow down and sometimes you should speed up. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm slowing down. But if I want to, I can speed up if I want. And there are parts in your speech where you should slow down to leave a bigger impression uh, and sounds more convincing to the examiner. So content-wise, perfect, okay? But 
uh, in terms of speaking skill, I think you should work on your variation in your pitch uh, and your speed. Uh, and I think you can practice this by just practicing at home. Um, do you have anyone to, to, to practice speaking English with um, at home? Um, I, act, I actually am good at speaking, but I was, act, I was too scared, so I was of course. like that. Uh -huh. I agree. Yeah, if I, I agree. talk to my friends, I, act, I, I am actually really good at speaking. No, when I ask you follow-up questions and when you answer it, it sounds very natural too. Um, but I think it's because it is a presentation and you are feeling nervous, um, it affects your, your tone and your speed. So I guess the goal here is that, uh, so that one day you can speak as good as you are speaking with me earlier when I ask questions or with your friends, even when you're presenting, right? That's the end goal. Okay, so I think well done. Well, you did a really great job. I think the expert has given you a very constructive, you know, comment so that you could, you know, be better the next time because uh, if you have some weaknesses and some room for improvement, you'll be much better in the future. But uh, may I have a question for you? How long have you been learning English? Because you speak English really well. Um, about six years. And if I go and turn to grade five, it will be turned to seven years. Wow, you speak English really naturally. How about public speaking skill? How long have you been practicing those? Four to five years. Four to five years. You did a really great job. Kudos to you. And I believe that you stand a really high chance of winning a two-week summer camp in the UK. So now please take a look at the screen to know more about the prize, okay? You did a really great job. You brought a lot of energy to the studio and to the audience. And on behalf of you, I would call a lot of audience to vote for you because I believe that you can win Voice of the Year. Kudos. Yay. Yay. And for our expert, with a lot of tips on IELTS and the study plan, would you like to say something more to motivate the students? Uh, okay. Uh, students, if you're planning to take the IELTS, um, just figure out the right course of action uh, depending on your level and try to make the whole process fun. Don't, don't make language learning a cruel process that you absolutely hate. Just find English materials on YouTube and watch it so that you can absorb the language naturally. And just give it time. If you do that daily, I think uh, with time, uh, you will get eventually better at English. Okay. Yeah, thank you teacher. Thank you for all joining us. And it's the end of the show, which I don't really want to say goodbye to all of you guys, but I have to. Thank you so much for watching the show, and we will see you guys next time in the next episode of IO Junior. Bye! Bye! Welcome to the backstage area of IELTS Face Off. Starting off today with our soon to be young scientists in the future. Uh, how do you think you can contribute to the world of science? Maybe can you briefly describe? Um, I think that I can, I want to make a flying car that can, that, is make, that will not make the world pollution. I mean like air pollution. The car will not use gas, it will use that electricity and battery. That's a great answer. If you like his presentation, please uh, vote for him for Voice of the Year. And please don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms and subscribe to IOPS Face Off on YouTube. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Bye.